Hey guys, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Mark here with Steve, and Steve is taking us on a kind of a deep dive into some of these 10.3, Final Cut Pro 10.3 new features, things that you may not discover by yourselves. Uh, you know, we've got tutorials that go over all the features, but we're really diving into some really interesting things. So I think in particular related to audio, you're gonna to wanna to check this out because Steve's really gonna help us understand what's happening with audio in 10.3. Right, I'm calling this the 10.3 Audio Signal Path. How does the audio in a clip that has multiple channels flow through the clip? Because you're gonna to need to know that when you're adding effects and you're doing panning. It, you can find this out in the manual and you can certainly dig in, but this will save you a lot of, of that legwork. Yeah, and it will help you wrap your mind about how it works when you're, when you're expanding all of your lanes, when yep. you're expanding your sub roles and you're applying effects to compound clips or whatever. This, this is key to understanding all that. Absolutely. So I wanna look at, we're in the 10.3 interface here. Before I actually get into the signal flow, I just wanna show you something that you may not be aware of. If you go into the photo and, and sound browser here, and let's say I go into sound effects, all these sound effects load up, the ones that are kind of the factory installed ones. And the thing about these that's different about the previous version of Final Cut Pro 10 is that you can now um, make selections. You can sit, you can go through here and you can make selections on your clip. There we go. You couldn't do that yeah. previously. And you can skim them and you can do can, that previously. And you can skim them too. Yeah. Right. And what's really nice is if you click and drag to the left, you can expose the event and drop that sound effect into into whatever event you want. That's awesome. So the the sound browser, the sidebar goes away, the, the library list comes up and lets you drop it right in. Let you drop it right in. That's fantastic. Isn't that great? Yeah. All right. So now to the signal path. Okay, so I have these um, drone sound effects and I and I I picked them for a specific reason. Okay. They are five point one sound effects. They have six sound channels. Sound. Okay. okay, so now you can't tell here. In fact if I um, reveal the meters you can see that that they are in fact a 6.1 or 5.1 surround. You can see all the ballistics. Yep. Now, just for those of you who don't know, unless you have hardware to monitor surround sound, what Final Cut does is does a stereo mix down. So to your, to your left and right speakers. That's right. And mm -hmm. so you're not gonna get 5.1 unless you have the, have the hardware. Right. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is press Command 4 to open the inspector, and I wanna look at the components. Right now, in the audio configuration area, you'll notice it's set for surround 5.1. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have all five channels coming out of this. Can you drag clip. that bar up so we see? You can drop it up uh, or down. There you go. Okay. Gonna go. I'm going to leave it somewhere down because I'm going to start applying. Oh, and you've effects. got a full height inspector. Yeah, I got too. a full height inspector. That's so awesome. So um, right now, everything's is being contained. All the six channels are being contained in a in kind of this wrapped 5.1 surround. Now, yes. what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little. Uh, drop down menu and I'm going to break them out into individual components. Okay. So six mono. Boom. Now are. I have all six channels and one of the things that's a rule in Final Cut Pro 10.3 is that every single clip you import now has to have one parent role, either dialogue, music, and effects, and it yeah. has to have one sub one role. Sub -role. Right. Yeah. So in other words, if there's only one channel or one component, it'll say effects and then effects, effects one. one. Or dialogue but, and dialogue or one. Or dialogue, dialogue one. It has to be there. It's system assigned. You can never delete them. Mm -hmm. There are what I call fallbacks. So if you create a system, custom sub role and delete it for some reason, the system still has to assign a sub role. Right. Does that every make sense? Clip, every clip has to have a sub role assigned. Every yeah. clip. So, so I have this parent role and I have all of these dialogue sub roles. And I could name them, but I'm not going to do That's not the point of this, this right. lesson. It's talk about signal path. So um, I have effects one through six because there are, are six channels here. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to edit this clip into, the into this empty timeline by pressing uh, E. So you can actually, in fact, see all of the components they come in. And look, in the roles inspector, I've got sub roles expanded. You can yes. see all of those components. Yes, uh, and the roles are assigned to and, and, Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, why, why do it this way? Why, why break them into in, in, individual? Because Here's why, you have the ultimate control when you have access to the channels. Yes. All right, so if I had it in 5.1, I wouldn't be able to go into component and let's say pan one of those components right or left, hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I can go in, I can apply individual effects to effects the components. Effects to a specific component. And I can mm -hmm. pan the individual channels. Okay. Okay, that it gives me a level control uh, that I don't have otherwise leaving it as 5.1. Yes. Okay, so that, that's something to consider. Now let's talk about the clip itself. Very important to understand. Okay, um, in previous versions of Final Cut Pro, if you had multiple components like this, what would happen is that all the components, the channels, they would be routed through the clip 
and then they would be summed at the top clip level. So, e no, so even if you went into the individual yeah. component and panned or like you added an effect, by the time it got to the clip level, it was being summed. Everything's put together. Everything's put back together okay. as to a, as a single, single, single like a, audio feed. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's not, the old way. That's the old way. Mm -hmm. Final Cut 10.3 does not handle audio that way. Every clip, if it has a component, has it's an individual channel. So you so think of the clip itself like a mini mixer now. Yeah. It's like this little mini mixer where every component is going through the clip. It's, and they an, stay it, independent they the stay whole way through. They stay independent all the way through. This means that if you pan one of the channels right or left, yeah. or if you add an effect, that goes through the clip that way. Nice. Where previously nice. Yes. it did not. So it gives you much, much more control. Way more yeah. control. Okay, so this is a this is a big deal. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I'm just to keep things simple. I'm going to show you what you can do. I'm going to option click on let's say yeah. I'm going to option click on effects two. And what what I'm doing actually yeah on effects one. Option click on effects sub one. Notice it by doing that it turns off the other component. Which is a new feature. Which, you, before you had to go and click every single one to turn them right. off. In fact, I mean, well, let's say I only work with component effects one, and maybe I want to work with component effects three. So that's, the, all, that's all you're seeing that's now. That's all you see. Sure. Isn't that great? So what's great now is I can select just this component, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go into the audio inspector up here, and I'm going to reveal uh, the panning. Well, actually, it's already revealed. You hide and show. But then under the mode, I'm going to choose create space. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to create a, uh, I'm going to create a surround space and bring this panel down here. And now with that effects three component selected, I can pan this all the way left. In fact, let's I'm going to go ahead and just uh, mute this particular channel for right now, so you can see what's going on here. I'm now panning this component to the you know the far left. Right. And now, so when you play it, no, notice you can see I'm only get left ballistics. Left ballistics. Yep. So uh, if I move this over to the right and I play, you're now getting right ballistics. And what's this, 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 if you're doing sound design, this is freaking huge because I can do things like I can go over here and say, I want to set a keyframe for that panning port, you know, for, for where the, that component is there, yeah. move the playhead over here, and then it's, a, and then I'm just going to mm -hmm. take the puck and move it over to the right. A keyframe's automatically set. And so when I play this back, and actually, look, look as I scrub, you see the puck's moving yeah. from left to so the, right? So the jet moves across That's your speakers, right. That's right. So now I have complete control. I'm adding this effect, this panning. I'm changing the panning of the component. The puck is moving from left to right. This is, and then, I, I can't tell you how important this is to, as, as an audio person to be able to go in and have that, that level, level of control. control of the components. That's right? terrific. Okay. Now, What's also nice is that you can add effects to the component level. So, for example, if I go down here, um, let's say under, let's see, find some, some, uh, let's see, I'm under the audio effects distortion. Let's say I wanted, because I'm doing some cre creepy Halloween thing, and I mm -hmm. wanted some really creep, cre some creep factor thing. Maybe I want to go in here and add some, um, I don't know, some clip distortion or something. I'm not going to play it, but I just want to show you what happens when you apply it to the component. Yes. What happens is that particular effect gets applied to the component. You can see there's there's the parameter controls for it, but notice there's an effects badge on that component. And just on that component. I'm just on that component. Yep. It's not on any other component. So if I, I'm going to go ahead and undo that and show you what happens when you apply the effect at the clip level. Okay. Okay. Now this is. Interesting, as soon as you apply an effect to the clip level, watch what happens. Mm -hmm. you, you'll notice you'll get a badge uh, above the parent and the parent role. It says effects, and you've got this little symbol that looks like a mix down. So you got a little, like, merging, little, symbol. little merging symbol. Yeah. And you also get that on the clip itself. Yep. Okay, what's happening here? This is where you are applying the effect to the combined output, right? Because you put it at the clip level, so it's applied to everything. So everything that's being fed through the clip now is getting that effect it's all to fed it. to that effect right and that's what that symbol means is everything's coming everything's together into flowing, the effect. everything's flowing <laughs> into the clip and then you're applying effect to the clip does that make sense it absolutely all makes right. sense so what to recap to have the most control of your audio you mm -hmm. want to work at the component level you should be applying your effects and all your to the components to the, or the, the sub roles right. or the components yes as soon as you apply it to the clip level you've now done what, what amounts to summing Okay, like a like a mix down. Like a, it's a in fact, that's what it's called. Yeah. If you look at the Apple documentation, it's yes, called it's a, mix a mix down. Okay, it's called a mix yeah. down clip, and you see you see the visual there. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Right. Excellent. I have, I have nothing more to say. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a, an audio education right there, and a Final Cut Pro 10.3 education because this is really foundational to how audio now works in 10.3, right. and it's why it's so powerful. <laughs>
Okay, you guys, thanks for watching. Hey, we have a full uh, breakdown, Final Cut Pro, what's new in depth, rippletraining.com, goes over all the new features in in depth, as it's titled. So check that out. Uh, thank you for watching Matt Break Studio, and we'll see you soon.